Okay, this video you're going to look at a combination lock, um, and I have one here, and darn it, it only has three wheels, but my example there's four wheels. Okay, so I'm sorry about that, but, but I don't know if you've ever seen a combination lock, but um, if you get the right code in a row, like say, uh, what have we got here, uh, 440 or whatever, then uh, the lock will open, or that's not the right code, and so you just try to change again, okay, let's try 447, right? And say you've forgotten your lock, your your code, or if you're trying to break into something, and you're trying different combinations, and 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 the trick is, well, you know, how hard is it to 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 guess one of these things, right? Um, so lots of interesting information online about combination locks, but um, so this is a combination lock with three wheels, okay, and it has digits zero through nine, okay. So, but our example, we're going to talk about a combination lock with um, four wheels. Okay. So, a combination lock has four wheels, and each wheel is digits zero through nine. Only one combination in order on the wheels will open the lock. Okay. So, how many possible combinations of digits in order are are there on this lock? So that's part A. Press pause and do that. Press pause and do part A. How many possible combinations of digits are there on this lock? Okay, so I'll do it now. So it, it's very similar to the phone number, isn't it? Because you've got, so you've got one, two, three, four uh, wheels. I know that the one I'm showing you only has three. Sorry, I don't have a four wheel one. But um, just imagine we had four wheels. Um, and in each each wheel, you can have digits zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, sorry, one sec, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. Okay. So, um, so so just to get just for for one wheel that that's ten options. But to get for two wheels for two digits in a row, you actually have a hundred options. And we went over that in the phone number. So I'll just I'll just run through. Uh, one quick example. So, like the first wheel could have zero, okay, but then the next wheel could be either one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Or the first wheel could be a one, and the next wheel could be a one, a two, a three, a four, five, a six, a seven, an eight. Or a nine. Oh, I forgot my, I forgot my zero, didn't I? Yeah. So the first wheel it could be start with zero zero. The next wheel it could be um, one zero all the way through one nine. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you is, and as you can know, there are ten ways of going zero something, and then ten ways of going one something. Of having one something and then ten ways of having two something two 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 right because we could be two zero to one to two to three to four to five to six to seven to eight to nine so there's ten ways of having two something and so on all the way through ten ways one two three whoops of having nine something so just like with the phone numbers. Ten ways of having nine something, right? So there are overall then a hundred ways of uh, rearranging the first, two, just the first two wheels in the combination lock, right? A hundred ways of, of arranging the first two wheels, from zero zero all the way through nine nine. A hundred different ways, okay? So if it took you one second to turn a wheel and, and try that, and then turn a wheel and try that, so so for every time you you you, you you change, you make a new uh, two digit option, it takes you one second to try it. Um, that would be a hundred seconds just to test two wheels on a combination lock. A hundred seconds would be about how long it would take, right? So, um, and just like with the phone number, then to talk about the third wheel, I'd like you guys to think. If you take any one of those two-digit options, like say 
five, six, or whatever, you can add on 10 different digits on the end of five, six. So you could have five, six, zero, five, six, one, five, six, two, and so on, right? Uh, five, six, zero, five, six, one, five, six, two, five, six, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? So there are 10 options for every two digit option for the first two wheels. You can make 10 new um, uh, uh, combinations in order for three wheels. Okay? So you could take any one of those 100 um, hundred possibilities or, or well I'll just say options for the two wheel two wheels take any one of those hundred and times it by ten to get ten new um, three wheel options okay so for this is two wheels just like with the phone number that's two wheels and then if we look at three wheels we have one thousand options right a thousand options and then similarly when we go to four wheels you can take any three digit option like um, one zero zero and you can add on any um, number from zero to nine onto that or nine nine two and add on any uh, you could add on 10 different uh, numbers to the end of that to make a new um, sequence, right? So for four wheels, we could take any one of the 1,000 three wheel digit options and make 10 new uh, four digit numbers to get 10,000 options uh, for numbers for a four wheeled combination lock, okay? So 10,000 options. Okay, so the answer to part A is that how many possible combinations of digits in order are there on this lock with four wheels? 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 10,000 um, possible combinations in order. Okay, 10,000 possible combinations in order, right? Now, part B. Suppose that you have forgotten the combination. You try 5, 4, 3, 8. What is the probability that the lock will open with this combination? Please, please give your answer as a fraction. So, can you do that? You've forgotten the combination. You try 5, 4, 3, 8 and see if it works, right? So just try a random uh, option, see if it works. What's the probability the lock will open with this combination? Please give your answer as a fraction. So there are 10,000 different ways to arrange the four wheels. Agreed? This is only one out of 10,000. So the answer is the probability is one out of 10,000. What's that as a decimal? 0 0.0001 okay what's that as a percentage 0.01% right part C out of frustration I try 200 different combinations. What is the probability that one of these 200 efforts will open the lock? So I don't just try 5438, I might try 7991 and 8301 and 4375 and 2881 and 2010 and 18381 and so on. I try 200 um, different combinations what's the probability that one of these 
200 efforts will open the lock. Can you do that? So the probability here is that's just 200 out of a possible 10,000. Okay. So if we um, put that fraction in lowest terms, what do we get? So divide the top and bottom by 100. You can cross off these two zeros. Now we have 2 over 100. And put that in lowest terms. 2 to 2 goes once. 2 to 10 goes 5 times. 2 into 0 goes 0 times. And that gives us 1 out of 50 is the answer. What's that as a decimal? 1 out of 50. Well, it's 2 over 100, which is 0 0.02. And what's that as a percentage? That's 2%, isn't it? So we have a 2% chance. If I guess 200 um, different possibilities for this lock, we have a 2% chance of getting it. And if, if, you, if you guess one every second, if you were able to try one every second, that's 200 seconds, right? Or if you guess one every two seconds, that would be 400 seconds to guess it and so on, right? So four wheels, you know, it, it's quite possible that, that if you had the patience, you could actually guess because um, you're looking at, if you can guess one every 10 seconds, or every second, that, that's only 10,000 seconds. That's not a terrible amount of time. But part D, let's see if we can uh, follow on from this. Suppose you're determined to open the lock by trial and error. You try a new combination every second. What is the longest amount of time that it could take to find the correct combination? Give your answer in days, hours, and minutes, days if appropriate. Please round your answer to the nearest minute, okay? So, let's see if we can do that. So, um, part D. And you can press pause and, and do this yourself and then check the video for the answer if you like. So what is the longest amount of time it could take to find the correct combination? There are 10,000 possible answers and you try a new combination every second, okay? So that means it would take 10,000 seconds, agreed? Now we can use a thing called unit analysis, which you've all done, as I know, and we can write that 10,000 seconds over one, right? And we're going to try to turn it into minutes, hours, days, and so on. So let's just turn our seconds into minutes and see what we get. So times that by what? To turn it into um, minutes. Remember your facts. Uh, I hope you all know 60 seconds is the same as one minute, right? 60 seconds is the same as one minute. So, and seconds are on the top, and I want to turn my seconds into minutes. So I can multiply this thing by something with minutes over seconds. Now, one minute equals 60 seconds. So this is called my unit fraction. You've seen that many times before, I hope. And now the seconds cross cancel, okay? And this should give me the amount of minutes, right? 10,000 over 60, I'll put that in the calculator. So 166.666, oh, can you see that, 166.66? Now, um, so that is the amount of minutes about about that many minutes. Um, where am I going to put that? I kind of want to do the whole thing all at once. So I'm going to write that here. So it's about 166.7 uh, minutes, right? But that, that still doesn't look great to me because I'd like kind of like turn that into hours, okay? And I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour, okay? So I'm going to times this guy now by, because I want to go from minutes to hours. So M-I-N, 
here, HR for hours here. One hour equals 60 minutes, okay? And now my minutes cross cancel, okay? And, and, and you, you know that, so if that's the amount of minutes, how do you get the hours? Well, how many 60s are in that? So divide that by 60. How many 60 uh, minute amounts are in that? And we get 2.7777. So, so this thing is approximately um, 2.778, let's say, hours, okay? Um, but I would like to give my answer in, please give your answer in days, hours, and minutes, okay? So, yeah, that's almost three hours. It's two point, about 2.8 hours, but I would like to give that as hours and minutes. So, so that's actually two hours and how many minutes? Right, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So what I'm going to take is take that the 0 0.778 um, portion of an hour, the 0 0.778 part of an hour and times that by uh, 60 minutes. In fact, I'll use my unit analysis to show you how that works. It's almost going back again. 0 0.778 hours over 1. See that? And turn that back to minutes. Turn the hours back to minutes, right? 1 hour 60 minutes. And see how we end up multiplying by 60 again, right? 0 0.778 hours times 60. So on this thing, I'm going to subtract 2 just to get this whole thing so I don't have to round. Okay, then I'm going to multiply that by 60. Okay, and that gives me 46.666. Okay, and here my hours cross cancel. And I get 46.66 and so on minutes. Which rounds because it says, um, please round your answer to the nearest minute. So that rounds to. 47 minutes, 47 minutes. So the answer, two hours, 47 minutes. Is so if I've got a four wheel combination lock and I can change a wheel uh, once every second and test it, see if it opens, it would take me at most two hours, 47 minutes to get the answer. But the thing of it is, you could well come across the answer. In fact, I would totally expect that you would come across the answer before you have attempted all 10,000 possibilities on your combination lock, right? So, so you're more likely to expect to take about half that time, maybe an hour, um, you know, 23 minutes or something like that, okay? I mean, you'd be very unlucky if you didn't get the answer until your very last attempt, 9999 nine, 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 or something like that, right? So this is the longest amount of time it could take to find the correct combination. Of course, you may be slow, and so you might only be able to do a new one every three seconds, in which case your time would be three times that, wouldn't it? It'd be like, you know, uh, the longest amount of time would be over seven hours, and you would expect to be done in three and a half hours or something like that. So.